Already. Da da da. Da da. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to 40G Friday Photo Talk. I am Alex Koloskov, uh, founder of 40G School of Photography, and uh, your host today. Uh, today, uh, we'll be doing a few things. The most exciting, it's, it will be, uh, well, two things. Workshop, uh, sort of like little workshop. I, I'm going to demonstrate, I, I want uh, to talk uh, to you about polarized light and polarized filter uh, in product photography. Uh, plus, we're going to review the 40G challenge uh, that was submitted, uh, the submissions for 40G challenge for the last week. And find the winner who will get any course uh, of his or her choice on 40G. So, how are you doing, guys? Good evening, James. Travis. Woo, nice. Hello, hello. Hello, greetings from Spain, greetings from uh, California. Uh, is everything fine? You hear me well, you see me well. Uh, please post uh, plus, uh, plus on uh, chat. Right now we are on YouTube, so this is what happens every Friday. Uh, every Friday uh, we are online with... Uh, either workshop or challenge or all together uh, for you guys. So like this video if you enjoy what we're doing and uh, if you're not subscribed yet, uh, subscribe to 40G channel, YouTube channel. So next time when we go live, you'll be notified and you can watch us uh, any from any device, you know, from phone, from any place in the earth where you have internet. Okay. Evertuber, Nadia, whoo, nice. Thank you guys, I see pluses, so all is good. Okay. <clears throat> there are so many things to talk about. <laughs> uh, uh, because of all these events, you know, you want to travel, right? I want to travel, but I want, don't want to wear a mask in, in the plane. Uh, crazy thing. And it's summer, it's time to travel. Anyway, polarized light and polarized filter. Uh, you probably know what it is, right? And uh, it's uh, not really, you know, something super new to you. Or is it something new? So let me know. Привет, Vadim. Uh, if you have ever uh, shoot with polarized light, not the filter, but uh, if you used polarized um, screen, I would say, on your light, please post plus. If you have used just polarized filter on your camera, if for any reason outside, maybe, you know, for our in studio, uh, but never used light, please post minus, okay? So I'll know um, basically uh, the, your experience in this area. So plus, if you have used both, of course, both it's like a filter on the camera and uh, the light is polarized by itself. So you post plus if you have experience, if you tried and uh, you've seen the result. Uh, if uh, you never used polarized light but probably used the filter, you post minus. If you never use even filter, well, you just post nothing. <laughs> you just <laughs> watch what I'll be uh, talking about. And. Uh, I'm gonna talk about all these things that I have here and then we'll jump. Uh, you see I have some bottles there, I have another some cool uh, subjects that we can try to shoot uh, with uh, either polarized filter alone or polarized light. Okay, so uh, a few pluses that I see, uh, a few minuses. Okay, minus is actually a little bit more than pluses, but you know, it's still, uh, I mean, it's cool uh, to, to see that many of you have experience with polarized light. That's super cool. So, in short, you understand what polarized filter is doing, right? And the whole idea about polarization. You're supposed to kind of know it already because it was a school program, right? Uh, so in short, it's like, you know, there is like a, a little uh, gap, uh, not the gap, specific orientation, right? Uh, for the 
light waves that can enter uh, only well, only specific orient oriented uh, light waves uh, can light waves can enter the camera if you have polarized filter, and uh, the basically uh, that orientation is uh, what happens. I mean, changing the or orientation uh, when you turn or rotate your filter, change how much polarized light can get in or not get in into the camera. Uh, the super important to understand that polarized filter on the camera interacts only with polarized light. If light is not polarized, filter just do nothing except uh, basically a little bit uh, reducing the amount of light that gets to the camera, uh, like any ND filter, for example. Right? You understand? So, to make your filter, because this is the kind of the last uh, thing that uh, you control when you work with polarized light. Uh, you need to have that light. And this is what works uh, for landscaping, right? For deep blue sky or for interesting reflection on the water. Uh, why sometimes we use polarized filter? Because uh, there is some amount of polarized light coming from that scene. For example, from the sky, from the sky, there are some amount of uh, from blue sky. Uh, we have polarized light. I mean, not not overcast. And uh, when light gets reflected from something glossy, there is some amount of polarization happens. So even when light is not polarized, but it reflects from polarized surface, let's say, I mean, from glossy surface like uh, let's say water, it gets polarized a little bit. And this is where a uh, polarized filter kind of start working right for us. It can either block that light or let it in. You understand, right? Monolights. Uh, question a bit of subject. Does the aperture uh, Fresnel lens work with uh, moon lights? Monoli oh, with monolights. Yes, of course, James. Why, why not? I mean, aperture. It, it doesn't matter what kind of light it is, right? This is, for example, aperture uh, Fresnel lens, the previous version that I mounted on. It's not monolight, but it doesn't matter. Right? It just should somehow fit. Even though it's, it's never made for the uh, brown color pico light, but you see there is some way to mount it there. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It works with any light. Okay, back to polarized. In studio... No, let's kind of jump back uh, to what I was talking about. So, the effectiveness of the polarized filter, CPL, circular polarized uh, filter, right, is based on how much polarized light enters the camera. I mean, hits the, well, hits the filter, hits the lens. And to control everything, you basically need a far, not everything, but to control a lot, uh, yeah, especially in the studio, you need to have that light, polarized light. So the whole idea of putting the polarized filter like this, or, well, there are larger versions of it, right? In front of your light, in front of your light, is the only to get polarized light that then you can control uh, with your lens, right? With, no, sorry, with your filter. You rotate it, rotate it more, rotate it more. Well, let me see which way it's going to hide something for me. Ah, interesting, it's not really hiding anything. It changes the, it changes the color, reducing this, but not completely. Uh, which means this uh, film is like, it's far uh, less than 100% polarization. And uh, this is the main thing uh, when we talk about that film that we put uh, on front of your uh, light is how much it will polarize the light in percentage. More expensive uh, films um, tend to polarize better, less expensive tend to uh, Polarize less. Okay. So what I have here, 
Uh, let me switch to, to this. One second. Yeah. Uh, we don't have much light, but it's a good thing because you're going to uh, see a little bit more of what is going on. So I do have two uh, glossy subjects, and actually let's, uh, let's do this. Oof. Yeah. Let's add one more. Oh, man. Let's add one more. And what I'm going to show you is how this light that I have here gonna work with these subjects, okay? Uh, what I have, uh, this is just a little soft box, okay? This is a little soft box uh, that uh, it's box light from brown, brown color, but the idea is just a soft box. And I have, uh, well, I just used that, uh, which is not super nice, but it will work. I use the tape to uh, get uh, that screen that's similar uh, that I showed you, the film, uh, that will polarize this light. And the main uh, challenge, basically, uh, to work with polarized light, that you can't really get it large enough because it will be too expensive to cover, let's say, your diffuser or something. So mainly, mainly, we use polarized light uh, for the spotlight, for the spotlight. And uh, I do have uh, another spotlight with polarized uh, film, so we'll play with it as well. Uh, but here, uh, it will just uh, be more visible when I will use a softbox. So it's softbox with uh, completely polarized light. I mean, not completely polarized, but all the light goes through the film, right? And one more thing for you is, let's say when you need to have a soft box, let's say, uh, with the polarized filter on it, it's polarized uh, the film, the basically polarized light. Uh, and uh, you don't have softbox, you don't have a uh, large enough uh, diffuser, what you can do, you can uh, add polarized film on your diffuser. For example, this is Savage Plastic, piece of Savage Plastic on one side, and uh, the polarized film, the polarizer, uh, on another side. This is linear polarizer, I think, and this is, I think, circular. It works both ways, but uh, I think circular, circular is a little bit better. So when you do this way, then you can put your light behind and get it polarized. Question for you, just to check, because I think it should be super easy, but answer me this. Uh, with this setup, let's say I'm shooting some jewelry or whatever, and this little diffuser will work for me, because it's kind of, let's say, a small subject. How are you going to position where uh, the subject would be and where the light should be to make it work? This side is a diffuser, Savage Plastic, this side is the film, the polarization filter, basically, where the subject should be on this side and light from that side or like that. So what side should be facing the subject? Film or diffuser? OK, so tell me, film facing the subject or diffuser facing the subject? OK? And meanwhile, let's put this guy like that. So just super simple on the side. And you do see what camera is seen. On the camera, I have uh, the filter, OK? Polarized filter. And it can do some cool things for me. <laughs> So first of all, you know what? Uh, let's do this. First of all, let's use just a filter without polarizer on the light. Because these three subjects, at least uh, partially glossy, the filter by itself should work, right? Because we know that from glossy surface, uh, light gets polarized when reflecting, reflecting from glossy surface. You understand, right? So let's do this. Before I run this, it will be a little bit more interesting. 
I got just a regular strip box. Okay, just a completely regular strip box over here. Okay, I will turn it on. Uh, it's number four, I think. Yep, that's number four. Will be on. This is will be off. And this is actually we don't need it that much. Okay. So let's see if we just take the picture, it will look like this, right? I didn't rotate anything. Let's let me rotate it. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to see the reflection. So there is a reflection, right? This is the reflection from strip box. And I'm going to rotate the filter, trying to reduce it. Okay, it looks like this is the, the least amount of light that I can get because further rotation gets more light and other side it gets more light. So this is the minimum, okay? This is the minimum and uh, let me do the maximum. Basically I'll rotate it like this. And the difference is actually very little between this and that, right? Just, so what it means, filter alone, polarized filter alone, a circular polarizer, it's from a B uh, plus W, you know, that brand black and white, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a cool filter, it's, it's relatively um, expensive and uh, good quality filter. And it still doesn't do a good job because the, well, the polarization that happen in, when light reflects the glossy surface is not enough, right? It's not enough. It just maybe like 10%. Let me see what you guys were answering here. Uh, diffuser, diffuser, diffuser phase into the subject polarized before the diffuser. Okay, wow, 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 I got something really cool for you to discuss now. I was actually surprised, guys. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so, Sadist Dvojka. <laughs> uh, it was the, when they run a test or a quiz uh, in school, in Russian school, in, not in Russian, in, in Soviet Union. Uh, like, you know, uh, score is two. Two out of five, it's like, it's really low. One, it's, it's, it's like, parents will kill you. Anyway, so I, what I was saying, that, that, you know, you can sit down, it's uh, two, two, two points for you only, out of five, which is bad. What uh, whoever said the diffuser should be facing the, the subject, you guys are wrong, super wrong. Why? What happens with polarized light when it hits something that not glossy? It will lose polarization. It's like you know hitting the chaos because this is what Matt's surface is doing. It's like, you know, doing all, I mean, kind of randomizing everything. And diffuser, it's basically matte surface that kind of let light through. And it doesn't matter what kind of light enters it, but the output will be always non-polarized light. It will be just, just regular chaotic uh, orientation of uh, light waves. And it's super important to understand. To make it work, you have to have light on this side, on the diffuser side, and the subject on this side. So the light that exits this diffuser, do it yourself diffuser, it will be still polarized. And it can only happen if it will be the, uh, the polarized. Uh, filter basically will be the last thing that light goes through okay it's super duper important because what will happen on the surface of the subject glossy surface will preserve the polarization it will preserve it will shift it the angle it will shift but it doesn't matter for us but it will preserve polarization and matte surfaces on the subject will kill polarization Okay, 
And this is the coolest part of the whole thing. Otherwise, it's no reason for us to use it light because, well, we just turn off the light. I mean, what's the reason? The coolest part, that glossy, we can turn off this light for glossy surface and it will be visible on a matte surface because we cannot control it, it's not polarized anymore. Okay? Do you understand this? This is the only way to make it work. Think about this. Uh, no, I, I can't uh, do it in the camera. Yeah, and the camera, it's always, you know, the filter is always on top, so. Answer me on the chat. Do you understand why this side should be facing your subject? Because the subject will reflect to the lens. This is the only way. Do you understand? Yes or no? What, what we'll do a little bit later today, it's interesting, I actually I didn't try it myself. I do have uh, this cool uh, light. This is the optical snoot light uh, from Godox. We have a review uh, for it on Fortitude channel if you want to kind of see what, how it's cool it is. And I have put uh, the piece of polarized film inside before the lens and there is a lens on my opinion it shouldn't be affecting the polarization i mean the lens because lens it's a clear glass so it's not supposed to kill polarization it should work this way as well but we'll try maybe i'm wrong maybe it will maybe it will reduce polarization you know the lens uh, many times who knows we'll see yes okay okay cool <laughs> uh we legit Kinda, kinda, kinda yes or kinda no. Okay, super. Thank you. Thank you, Hamudi, uh, Vadim. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, let's jump back to our stuff. Again, guys, if you uh, like what I'm doing here, please like this video and subscribe to Fortitude channel. Okay, this is uh, your little contribution to what I'm doing here, uh, just like you. Thank you, right? Okay, so you understand that there is no reason to use uh, just the regular light, but not polarized. Let's now put our polarized light the same place basically and turn it on and turn it off the other light okay so let's see now we have this light we have the filter and I gonna well I'm gonna take a picture let's say this one so and this uh, this way it doesn't make big difference right uh, however if I start rotating it, I can hopefully change something. So you see what is going on, right? And it's visible that it's not completely killing it, sort of. So two pictures, one and another, OK? Huge difference, right? I mean, just just enormous difference. No, this is something else. Yeah. This is with and this is without. And it's, you still see that uh, it's not completely dark, right, on the glossy surface. What it means? It means that uh, it's not 100% polarized light. So there are some amount of light uh, that, you know, is not polarized and it gets through all the filters. I mean, it gets through this filter and it's not being suppressed by uh, polarized filter. However, where it's cool, if you look at the brightest things, let's say if we shoot this little thingy again, 
what we have is the main reason in general why we should use, we could use uh, polarized light in the studio. The label of Coca-Cola, even though it's relatively reflective, it's still uh, mad enough to kill polarization, okay? And this is why the label is super bright comparing to the whole bottle, right? There is no other lights and the still we have a uh, label visible. You understand that it's like if you've been ever trying to shoot uh, beer or anything, uh, wine or whatever, and uh, avoid to have, well, you want to highlight the label, but don't want to have that reflection from the light on, on the bottle by itself. You, you know how hard it is. If it's spotlight, it will be, you know, somewhere uh, a little spot or whatever. It will be visible. This is effectively suppress the light, and it's super cool. Let's say if you're going to combine... Um, you're going to combine uh, this with, let's say, some normal light. <clears throat> let's grab this one. Normal, meaning not polarized, just normal, 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 normal light. Like this, for example. And I just want to be it somewhere like that, for example, right? So what do we have now? The super simple shot of the bottle. We have some edge light, which is kind of cool, nice, uh, on, on, on the other side, right? And we have a very little light on this side. And this is super cool. Again, it will work for anything, uh, especially for subjects where uh, there is a cool mix of matte and glossy surface. If it's all glossy, that's so-so. It will kind of suppress. If it's uh, really matte and glossy, it will work. Let me try to, you know, find, and I'll, hopefully I can show you. One second. <clears throat> if I have, let's say, okay, let's say I have some bottle of wine. Yep. Or, and it's interesting, will it work for this or not? Let's say some bottle of wine, right? Same place. It's not super clean, which is not super cool. Uh, let me do the, some cleaning. Because dust, and uh, you understand that any uh, anything that will diffuse the light instead of reflecting it, like uh, some dirt or, well, anything, it will kill polarization and we don't want it to happen, right? The glossy surf surface should be super clean, nice and bright, right? Let's say this bottle of wine. This is the normal look that you will get. Let's do like this. Yeah, almost. Let's kind of move it like this. So we have nice edge, right? And shoot it. Let's say we want to have uh, some light on the label. And this label is super matte because it's It is paper, so I set the focus on the label. And we do have uh, this reflection from the box. This label is large. If you have something smaller, it will be even uh, more kind of visible. And if you shoot it like this, it's not uh, gonna look nice because we have a reflection from this box, right? However, uh, if we want to suppress it, we do rotation. Hi, it's interesting. You see how it suppressed this light as well? Do you see how it kind of runs? But oh, it's interesting. It's relatively well. Oh, wow. Holy schmoly. Ha, this is cool. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so there is no light on this side, but label is highlighted. This is kind of cool. This is nice. Uh, what's cool, though, we do have reflection here from this light. But it's almost lost here. 
Ha. Just because the polarized filter is effectively killing this polarization. And I think I know what happened. It's interesting. Why it's so much different? It might be, let me see if I'm right or am I wrong. Yeah, looks like the bottom of the bottle reflects not this light directly. It reflects reflection on the table from this light. So light gets reflected on the table and then it reflects back. Maybe double reflection kind of increase amount of polarization. Who knows? But this is what happened. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is actually super cool, I like it. Another interesting thing, look at, I just want to show you, a uh, second, <laughs> uh, the top, look at this, what happens when I rotate in the filter. You see how it, the kind of, the shadow, the dark spot moves across here when I rotate my filter. What it tells me, well, what it tells you, <laughs> tell me what, it, what you think, why it, why it happened this way. And this is the answer, as I see it. Because the surface, uh, it's, it's curved surface, different angle of light that hits surface uh, changes, well, the reflection, you understand that reflection, uh, always reflection from glossy, it changes the angle of polar polarization, it changes. And actually it's, it's polarized because this is light is not polarized at all, so it's, it, it polarizes the light. But the different angle that light hits the surface uh, yields different angle of polarization. This is why we cannot suppress the whole arc with that filter, because it's either there or there. And the polarization changes across that arc. And still, it remains the same on the vertical part. Because I think we can do, yeah, you see, vertical, we can completely suppress this, right? Because here, it's not being, I mean, it's at the same angle of polarization. So all this, you know, it, it's lots of things for you if you never thought about it. But even with polarized light, when you have curved uh, surface, it, you won't be able to, let's say, completely suppress the light. Only on flat surfaces it will work the best. Many things like this. Uh, when you work uh, with jewelry, the best, it's just the best uh, use of polarized light, actually, jewelry photography. And we have a course, uh, you can check it out, where I show you. Because there are so many things comes to reflections, then refractions, when stuff, uh, when light goes through the, um, the gemstone and reflects from it. Not just from the surface, but from internal uh, surface, so it gets through. Uh, polarization just does some crazy stuff. <laughs> so you'll enjoy it. Okay, and the last thing before uh, we do Q&A. No, it's actually running quite late. Uh, we'll do some Q&A in a moment, and then uh, I'll jump on the review and challenge, uh, footage challenge, and find the, uh, the winner. Uh, what we can do, possibly, uh, the very last piece that I want to test, I want to get this uh, spotlight. And actually use this curved thing, which may not work well because it's curved. Okay. And I don't need... So uh, what's interesting in this, that the polarized light here goes through the lens. So light is here, I mean the filter is here, and the lens is here, okay? This is spotlight. And what we can test, we can actually see how it works, and uh, there are different type of surfaces, right? Uh, it's wooden, it's less uh, glossy, and this is super glossy. So let me see. Yeah, not much changes for the wooden. Look at this. So for the wood, that is not glossy. My rotation, well, it does reduce, actually, it reduces glare. Oh, cool, cool thing. You see, it reduces glare, but the internal, and it's glare uh, because there is some, uh, well, there is some polish on the wood, 
it's a layer of that, uh, how you call it, uh, layer of, uh, well, that, you know, transparent, hardened <laughs> substance. I forgot, luck in Russian. Uh, when it gets reflected. And it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to suppress it, uh, the reflection from external surface of that uh, layer. And uh, the wood by itself uh, diffuses the light. That's why uh, we don't see that uh, harsh reflection anymore, right? But when we go lower on the metal, we see quite huge difference, right? And uh, one second, it's too dark, right? Uh, let me change it to something like uh, one fifteenth of a second, one tenth of a second. So it will be, well, it's still not enough. One second. Yeah, it's continuous lighting. Okay. And to do this, I'm going to shoot remotely. So this is uh, this polarized light, okay? We do have uh, reflection uh, on the metal. It's less visible, but it's still quite visible. Uh, the wood cool. Uh, the wood by itself looks cool. And if you remove this filter and uh, make it instead of two seconds, one second, uh, to reduce the difference uh, of how much. You see how uh, wood look like. Actually, we can even do more. No, it's, it's still, uh, it will be good. So this vs. this. Wood looks better. And uh, my idea of having the, one second, uh, the idea of lens after the light, after the filter, sorry, after the polarized filter, works completely fine. It's, it's kind of, uh, it, it does work. Okay, anything, anything that veneer, lack, yeah, lack, uh, yeah, veneer, thank you. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, let's uh, talk about it. Uh, this is the technique, uh, like I said, it's relatively... Um, uh, well, it's not an easy thing, and uh, it has uh, lots of complications inside, but I really encourage you to uh, get there and try it. Let's... Uh, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's... Uh, do just a little research, okay, on a polarized filter on Google, and uh, you can see that uh, there are plenty options, even on Amazon, uh, where you can buy polarized film sheet, right? different sizes, different prices, and uh, it's A4, for example. This is the size uh, close to what I have on that filter, uh, $20, right? Uh, you can always check, uh, well, of course, uh, wavelength should be visible light, you not know, something crazy because it's going to work. Uh, and uh, you can check, it, it may be not... Uh, part of this description here, but uh, there is a, some coffee, coefficient, how you call it, uh, the, uh, it's in English, when uh, it, it tells how much, basically, uh, how much this film polarized, the effectiveness, the sort of like effectiveness on the filter, okay? So, and there are larger, of course, options for this. Anyway, we about to jump to our challenge. Uh, Moody asking, uh, asking Alex a question, if you uh, use two polarized lights, one of each side of the bottle, and rotate the filter on the camera to get rid of, the, of one reflection, and the other side rotate the film on the light itself, does it work to get rid of both reflections? Uh, yes, 
it's supposed to work well. You can, of course, uh, rotate the light or you can rotate the filter. It works the both, both ways and it doesn't matter what to rotate, it's just easier to rotate the filter. So uh, when you have two lights, two polarized light and one filter, you have uh, not only uh, one, uh, how you call it, uh, like, uh, like axis of uh, change, I mean, things that you can change basically it's between one light and uh, one filter but you can rotate another light and it will be uh, it will affect the image however i don't see much uh, use of it because you see you're supposed to uh, kill both lights right and uh, when they orient the same way oh yeah okay so talking about this when you, you if to kill the reflection from both lights yes you need to orient them so uh, they will uh, produce the same angle of polarization you understand right and it's not visible i mean i have no idea what kind of angle on my one light and i have no idea what another light so yes uh it's we should rotate each light let's say we can set lens for to suppress one light and if other light is not rotate i mean not suppressed we do rotate it till it's suppressed as well so it will be equal i mean the same angle of polarization in both lights does it make sense? It's, it's a little bit harder for me to kind of put it nicely, but I hope you understand. So yeah, it, it works. We can even play with this, but yeah, it's, it's not... Is it rotatable here or not? Let me check. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, uh, one second, where is my light? Where is my filter, the little one? Here it is, one second. So yeah, we can have light here, we can have light here, right? Two lights, uh, both of them polarized. And uh, we can see how it suppress one light. One second. <clears throat> it suppress one light. But other light is bright and opposite, right? This is kind of, yeah, this is how it works. So let's say I suppress this light. You see that it's, it's not quite visible on the left side. And then I need to rotate my light to get suppressed, right? And you can see, actually, you can see how the same film, but this side is way brighter. And it tells me that going through the lens, lens is not perfect, right? Ideal lens, ideal glass wouldn't change polarization, but not ideal one, and especially it's not, it's not super expensive lens, it's a lens not on the camera, but on the light. The glass is probably just regular, well, not regular, whatever, it's not uh, super duper glass. Uh, it it reduces amount of polarization, so it gets more normal light, just non-polarized light through this. And this is why it's not as effectively suppressed this comparing to that one. But the idea is the same, right? We do rotate and it does work this way uh, for us. Yeah, this is cool. And even without the lens now, we can check and shoot uh, with just this light. We do not have reflection. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. We do not have uh, reflection from the... Well, yeah, it reduces by a lot of this spotlight. Even though the spotlight for this uh, bottle is not really uh, needed, the bottle looks cool without it. Okay. So, let's talk about uh, challenge. Okay, there is a question from uh, Evgeny. 
Алекс, вы не тестировали, насколько слабеет цвет с этим поляризационным фильтром. Uh, so how much uh, the polarized filter will reduce uh, the amount of light? I didn't test. I mean, I didn't do any specific testing. Uh, on my kind of uh, rough observation, it's about uh, one, like one f-stop reduction. So let's say one f-stop reduction uh, because of the filter on the lens plus one f-stop reduction because of the film uh, in front of the light. So two f-stop reduction. Yeah, you need more power to kind of get through. And uh, well, either more power of your light or you can bump up ISO and you know, two f-stop up and you should be good to go with ISO 400 and <laughs> the same thing. Uh, Alex, did you mention the size of the softbox uh, camera, right? The size of the salt box. Well, it's you've seen it. It's it's not large. This is box light from Bron Color. Uh, it's a box light. Right. This is like, yeah, this one. Ha! This is my box. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> this is the exactly the box that I sit there. For G School of Photography, <laughs> that's cool. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is our stuff that I was shooting with the polarized light. You know, with jewelry and stuff like this, it's super cool. Uh, we do have this lesson. Uh, it might be on uh, in Pro Club. I'm not sure if it's uh, open or not. And actually, maybe there is some really old link. Let's see. No, it is. Yeah, it is there. So you can check if you want. Uh, there are some information. Again, guys, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll drop a link to chat for you uh, of this post. Uh, but if it requires you to be Pro Club member, well, you're welcome to join uh, Pro Club membership. Uh, this is where, uh, well, the most interesting stuff is going on. Uh, like workshops, and actually uh, I recorded the new workshop uh, for Pro Club uh, members. It will be released next week, early next week. Okay, so yeah, you're free to join. It's uh, about how much? $38 per month, I think. Okay, uh, let's jump to the... Oh, the size or... Uh, the uh, price, yeah, the price for this guy, uh, this box light, yeah, it's 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 nice price, it's it's cool price. You know, as usual, brown color, they have beautiful pricing. They have beautiful uh, lights, and uh, well, all the gear is uh, super cool, uh, super reliable. But it comes to the price. Uh, what I can tell that, you know, uh, with Broncolor, I bought it used a long time ago, maybe like, I don't know, 12 years ago or so. And I didn't buy it for 200 uh, to $2,800, of course, this box light. It was probably somewhere like 500 or $600 on eBay. But the beauty of this, that it works all the time. And I don't know how many actual years and pops uh, was run through that light. I mean, it it just super reliable thing. Anyway, guys, let's slow internet. Uh, well, it's not slow. Internet is actually really fast here, but I uh, I do streaming, right? It, it's, it, it takes time. I mean, it takes my channel a little bit down. Anyway, we have these uh, submissions. For the challenge, uh, the recent one, again, to uh, participate in 40G challenge, what you need to do is this. You need to submit the image. You need to state, uh, like here, that this is for 40G challenge, and 40G challenge is a tag, okay, hashtag, uh, one word, 40G challenge, and uh, state date that you submit submitting this image for. For example, uh, next Friday will be, well, will be next Friday, in July, whatever is that. What, what is that? You understand, right? You need to say. So this way we want, uh, we know what, uh, that it was submitted for this particular challenge and uh, easy for us to find. And uh, this, uh, the theme of the previous challenge uh, was 
level up the shot or do the same or whatever you call it but basically level up uh, when you uh, find some inspiration and you have to actually add the link of that inspiration and then you do something similar or better hopefully better because you can find a uh, not super cool one but uh, something you know uh, that you can improve or uh, well like this <laughs> this is our one of our workshops by the way uh, this this shot if uh, if you were wondering we do have class for this right uh, it was super cool when uh, you recorded well like everything the whole do it yourself setup is all this it was all done in the camera and then the whole post production two hours of uh, post production and uh, a little bit less than an hour uh, of the workshop time and then submissions and yeah this is not well you you probably well you're not the student of the uh, of the pro club uh, but anyway it was your challenge Hamudi yeah, Hamudi here you go and this is your result so let's talk about this uh, Hamudi it's it's cool it's super cool uh, it's just I mean it uh, the the first little impact uh, emotional impact is really uh, it's really good uh, then I kind of start looking at the details and oh okay there are some but you know emotionally it, again this is nice but what if you would have uh, Labutin, you know, Labutin, 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 right? Uh, that we used, uh, why we used Labutin? Because of the uh, red uh, bottom, right? Red bottom on the black one. So this is why uh, red paint on the black. Imagine, just imagine that you would have... Uh, red bottom and this paint would be red it will be just like two times more of emotional impact you know super easy trick because for you it doesn't matter what kind of color right to to throw and i understand that they choose this one but just want to uh, want to tell you that a little thing like changing the color and red color is it's a is the most uh, attention attract Attract, attractive color for the human because of the blood because of all this stuff that you know hardwired hardwired in our brains red is like boom we jump on red just to understand what is going on our monkey you know that sits inside our animal will jump on it and it just it's it i would encourage you to use this knowledge of you know how our brain works in terms of colors in your photography because it will add a lot it will add uh, a lot uh, to your photo just if you use some red of course the red should be kind of exp it should be part of the story it's not you know just put red out of blue for example red here it won't work because why it's red uh, and Labutins, yeah it's too expensive I didn't buy those Labutins. no I just ask uh, the friends you know between here and Bay Area hey you know girls who have Labutins and boom looks like but are Labutins and I borrowed Labutins and we shoot them and it was cool. Uh, no Labutin was uh, damaged during the shot. So, uh, Hamudi, this is cool. Technically done really well. Uh, the shape and uh, again, still kind of continue that emotional impact because it's not technical, it's more emotion. Uh, the, the look of the shoe is something that could be way more mm, not better it's not better way more uh, how to say it well it will attract more attention if it would be more expensive and uh, because those Labutins they have uh, very you know tiny uh, shit, got all the words today the way that it looks it's way more sexy and again this is something that attracts attention so this is one thing uh, technically speaking uh, your shoe, that shoe that you used, uh, it's interesting uh, surface. Here, I see that it's not really glossy. There is some texture, right? Uh, there is some... One second. So, talking about this reflection, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. There is some texture. And it's not super glossy, we see it. Here it's more like, it's almost like glossy but a little bit kind of dirty uh, reflection. 
So ideally, again, ideally, it should be glossy, glossy as hell, glossy as paint, because your paint is super glossy and you did it super right. It looks good, it looks glossy. Maybe a little bit more contrast than this. But really, the shoe should be the same, uh, the surface of the shoe should be the same as uh, the paint, same glossiness. This way it looks like, hey, it's, gonna, it's melting, because the whole story, it's melting, right? And if your paint is super glossy, but your shoe is not, it's a little bit, it still works, but you know what I'm saying. Um, then look at this, uh, there is some strange thing is going on here. It's almost like it, no, it's supposed to be, you know, what happens when it, uh, it leaves the table, when it kind of uh, disconnects from the table. It could be uh, some change of the shape of the drip, but somehow it happens after the table and looks strange. This one is kind of okay, but this and this, that reduction of the diameter of your drip happens after the table, which look a little bit weird. I don't know, a little bit weird. Uh, same thing happens here. It's almost like, uh, you know, uh, you have like a plastic that kind of gets uh, inside another plastic. So there is like connection, like a tube, you know, one is a little bit uh, the smaller diameter, one is uh, larger and one gets inside. Uh, it, it's a little bit strange just because of this. So I, I, it should be kind of more uh, natural shape. Other than that, it's super cool. Uh, I still debating with myself about the room on top. For the Instagram, uh, the square probably the best. But ideally, ideally, I would see a little bit more on top, a little bit more. I, like, like I don't know. A little bit more. Okay. Yeah, the rest is nice. So basically, it's vertical shot. It's not. It's not square. Vertical shot. It is semi-glossy. I understand this is semi-glossy. I see the shoe is semi-glossy, but it's it better to use a glossy one just because paint is super glossy, right? Sexier, elegant. Thank you, guys. Elegant. Yeah, it's elegant. Oh, beautiful word. Okay. It's very cold shoot and black uh, can be dramatic and powerful too. How could you do it here to give it more punch? E yeah, 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 that's, I mean, black could be, it's just saying that, you know, if it would be right, it would be even more. Here it's cool, it's because it's black and white uh, type of image, it, it's, it's nice. Uh, I'd guess that uh, the paint went uh, tightly under the side of the surface as it ran, uh, lightly under the surface. Uh, yes, maybe, maybe, uh, John, uh, I don't know, but again, it's look a little bit strange. Again, maybe, maybe it's, it's how it is. And here is mm, strange. Already, Hamudi, thank you. Uh, really cool job. Really, really good one. And uh, next one. So we do have, yeah, it's it's all mentioned and all it's cool and it's super good uh, in terms of it qualifies. And let's uh, jump to the uh, to the photo that inspired. That was the inspiration. Okay, nice. We do have a beautiful splash, yeah, beautiful splash. I would critique this one as well if I would uh, well, want to, but not right now, not today. It's a good, good shot. And you have uh, something similar. So the idea is to have splashes that hits the subject and kind of creates all the thing. And, you know, on uh, shots like this, shots like this, the, the collision, the collision uh, of the subject and your paint or whatever is flying liquid is the most critical part okay of everything it's the most critical part wait I am one second um, let me be like that uh, and uh, well of course it's most challenging because of this uh, you have it done, it's it's nice, and your splashes are nice. They have, you know, well-defined, the glossy the shape is uh, is nice. Uh, your subject is, is good, I mean, uh, it's highlighted nicely. I do have some, you know, we do have reflection, some gradient. Uh, it's relatively bright. Uh, it, 
it could have a little bit, uh, let's say, another reflection on other side. Talking about, uh, you know, gradient with sharp cutoff line uh, on other side. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, like here, you have some some reflection, but ideally, since it's it's probably relatively glossy uh, surface, uh, you, you could have you know sharp cutoff line and then some nice gradient. Uh, however, it's not a showstopper. The the biggest kind of it's not an issue because it's rel it looks relatively good, but uh, that impact uh, what what is not enough, what lacks of uh, your impact, that that flying kind of post-impact uh, liquid that flies all around is super thin. And it's a little bit unusual, because if we have such nice stream of liquid coming this way, right, it's thick, it's, it's full, and then it booms, and then it gets uh, so tiny, it's fine, but in ideal situation, it should be thicker, and uh, in general, uh, these shapes should be a little bit more interesting. Uh, here, on on your the shot that inspired you, how we can make it larger? I cannot. Um, it it looked a little bit better, but still, uh, you know, some little parts that uh, may not be as good. Uh, the the ideal thing when we have it's kind of uh, really you know, flying. If you look at, I can show you, in terms of, uh, you know, all this splashy stuff, uh, it's probably on certification program. One second. I did a long time ago, it was first in my life and uh, in uh, career of uh, educator, uh, photography educator, it was first workshop we ever, I mean, I ever did. It was a long time ago in Atlanta, uh, in Georgia. And uh, we've been doing, well, it was real. For example, this one uh, was not uh, Photoshop combined splash. It's far from being the best. Like I said, this is my, one of my first splashes that I did in public, I would say. Uh, but, uh, well, it, it was, we were hanging uh, each piece individually. They were hanging like this, and I was throwing the splash, and it was real impact. Of course, there was uh, a little bit composing after that, because we had several uh, shots. But you see, when it enters this way, it's visible that it was real impact because it's like, uh, you know, uh, many things went, went more like more natural way. Uh, so that, that natural look is, is super hard to preserve, it's super hard to do, but uh, this is what uh, you need to aim for, okay? And uh, let me see if I have another example. Uh, there is some advertisement, splash advertising. So, where I can show you something that will look like the real impact. Yeah, probably this one. The, yeah, there's not much impact, so, so it's, it's not, I can't really show you. <clears throat> so, back to this. The rest is super nice. I, I like uh, the, uh, you know, background spot. Uh, it's nice, kind of uh, all around. Uh, this color, colors. If it's yellow, if you have uh, some glossy, looks like golden stuff, right? And we have deep blue and we have white. You may try to, well, at least next time, uh, choose a little bit different color for your background because I'm not sure if it's complementary color to what we have on the subject. It's it's super. Uh, uh, well, it's it's really subjective uh, talking about colors, but it may be better, for example, uh, for you to use uh, blue, uh, yellow, for example, dark yellow, almost like a gold, uh, instead of blue, and then it gets to the you know brighter part, uh, just because we have some yellow here, right? There are some on the, on, on top, or it could be blue, like uh, close to the blue, uh, of course, brighter, but not on the can. Okay. Other than this, super good, and yes, like, and uh, I hope, yeah, I follow you, so I need to make sure that I follow, uh, what are you talking about? I have follow, yeah, and let's like it, and let's follow, and let's follow each other, guys, because uh, it's, it's super, uh, these are super good photographers to follow on Instagram, 
uh, see what kind of work they do. Alrighty, uh, next one. Uh, from story, uh, inspiration, second image. Yeah, I remember. I remember this image that we talked about uh, last time, and you kind of redid it. So, heads off, my friend, for you. I mean, kudos and uh, heads off and all this, because you did it. This is, I mean, it tells me that you are really passionate about improving your skills improving your photography uh, you you take the critique right and uh, you try to implement something you do something different in trying to make it better this is the only way to improve your any skill right and you do it and you share on public so thank you so much it's like the best uh, possible outcome of uh, out of my critique is this you know that I was dreaming to have the, uh, you did the improvement. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get. Yeah, this was your original, guys. If you didn't uh, see the previous uh, critic session that we had last uh, Friday, it was uh, the image. You can check what I was talking about, and uh, it was uh, the improvement. So you see, there are some changes. And uh, yes, I like it better. What is going on with you? iPad going crazy. Um, I like this better. I clearly see that this is is matte so i was kind of thinking it was glossy or not uh, i think it's matte and you did kind of you, you make it really clear and it's nice uh, i like this um, well did you reshoot it or you just yeah you did reshoot it. it's not just a post-production so cool cool um yeah i like it maybe a little bit uh, brighter on this side as well because this side is uh, is super bright uh, and this one almost, uh, well, a few times less, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, that edge, well, it's not really edge, but, you know, the edge between the glass and the liquid uh, internal edge uh, could be a little bit brighter as well. But the rest is super nice. I like it. Yeah. And this was the photo that I, right? It was the photo that was inspiration. Yeah. So you see, they have a slightly different uh, reflection. This side is a little bit longer and brighter, but still the brightness is relatively uh, the same. It's, it's it really close uh, the left and right edge of the bottle, and you kind of make it only one. Uh, wh why I did so, I'm not sure, but I think it was to have something similar on this side. And uh, another thing that look at this, they have uh, most of their brightness. Uh, coming from within the glass. So the edges are thick, right? And uh, lots of light inside the glass. Somehow you manage to get that sort of like a reflection on the internal edge, which is a little strange. It's almost look like a Photoshop or I don't know. It's really, it's hard for me to imagine how you can get this type of reflection. The top one looks completely like, hey, yes, this is the lighting. Uh, but this one, it's almost like Photoshop. I don't know. Ideally, ideally, I would love to see the light coming through the glass. So this part, the, you know, the walls of the bottle is where you get the light, where you get uh, the gradient. Because look at this, right? They have a gradient on both. It's, it's different brightness of gradient and it's done beautifully. Uh, the brightest one is inside the glass, right? So this one where you could have brighter uh, refraction in this case, okay? Again, this is improvement. This is great improvement from what you did and kudos again. Super cool stuff. Thank you. Okay, and uh, this is yeah, another shot. A cool idea, uh, the cap looks beautiful here and uh, the composition and everything uh, looks cool. I'm not sure about this edge, the left one, maybe you kind of need to kind of get a little bit, you know, have a little more room. But again, this subjective, it's it's not main thing there. But just be careful, you know, to, to cut on uh, on edge of anything and it close to the edge of the cap, the, the frame. Uh, so be careful. Uh, this is more interesting and it looks cool, but it's too, um, 
the glass is too anemic, I would say. You know, it, it, it lacks uh, reflections, uh, refractions, and uh, gradients. The glass is almost like a so flat. And the liquid, because of this, again, liquid doesn't have much of the gradients. Uh, liquid almost, for me, look like it's matte. You know, like there are liquid that uh, almost like a milk. You, you drop few, uh, well, you, you add few drops of milk, and it gets, you know, like that. It's matte. It's not transparent anymore. It almost looks like it is, but I'm sure it's not. And here it's, you know, it's a little bit disconnect. Uh, the bottle could have, again, considering how dark your left side is, your bottle could have darker edges and uh, have more gradients on it. It's too plain. The top looks great. You have bright areas, you have dark, it's, it's, it's super cool. It's not too dark, it's not too bright. The cap looks amazingly well. The glass, the glass is what needs to be worked out here, okay? So, thank you so much. Mori, Mo, Morizo, Morizio, Morizio, right? Uh, glamour, yeah. Okay, next one. Next one, guys, uh, is from Yo Yitz, Yitz 1000. We're going to follow uh, this great photographer. Let's see what he or she got. Wow, this is very first post. Woo! Congratulations! And you have 27 followers, followers. guys. Let's follow this uh, beautiful photographer because he or she did a great work. Here's the link, or you can just type 40D challenge on Instagram and find and follow. Let's follow each other or let's support each other because it, it works. Uh, we are the community. So, this is the, well, I can tell <laughs> uh, what the inspiration was. Inspiration was the image from, uh, from the course that now part of certification program. And uh, the core, uh, the image is, let me see, I think we have it here. Oh, no. Oh, di did we? No, really? Oh, here it is. So, this one. And what I can tell, you did even better. Because this was uh, from the part uh, where, you know, it's, it's the very beginning, so it was uh, relatively... Uh, simple lighting setup. It was nothing complex. It was just you know, hey guys, try let's try to shoot it this way. What you did, what you did is super cool. It's good. It's nice. It's like wow. So few things that I can tell you on where to improve. Uh, John saying that silver metallic card uh, cut to the size of the bottle and placed behind will help the liquid pop and, and internal interest. Uh, John uh, probably talking about uh, this image. Uh, yes, yes, might be. Well, there are different things that could be done here. Uh, but yeah, one of them, uh, like John said, yeah, we can use card. Anyway, uh, we have this. And first, the very first. Again, unfortunately, I don't have your name, but what you did here is big no. Yes, I understand your desire of uh, show, showing your subject as large as possible. But come on, it's never. I mean, you shouldn't crop it this way. Never, ever just forget. That's okay sometimes to crop it uh, at the bottom like this. I mean, it's actually fine. But on top, there should be a room for, well, to make it living thing. <laughs> Really, we, we can't crop that tight. Leave more room on top. Okay, first. Because you see, technically, uh, it's done really well. You did it well. I don't know if you are part of certification or not, if you sign up or not. Uh, but, uh, well, it looks like you did a really good job. Uh, there are some uh, post-productions that could, be, uh, could have some little improvements over here. That's fine to have that uh, dark area, but, you know, there is some, uh, let's say, additional line, right? Additional line like this tiny one. The bright one, there is no reason to have it. It's not a big deal, it's, it's just very minor things, but it, it could be improved. Uh, the same here, since uh, it's supposed to be nice gradient, 
just sort of like a lines. Uh, just clean them in Photoshop. You can, you know, clamp, I mean, uh, either dodge and burn if it's too, uh, um, too diffused or if it's a little bit uh, more edgy, you can use uh, clone and stamp tool uh, with all that, you know, artificial intelligence on them uh, from Adobe and uh, kind of make it a little bit better. Okay. Uh, the rest is super cool. Uh, I like it. Uh, you, s you choose to have uh, really narrow black reflection. Talking about this black reflection, the, the, the last one, the, this one. Okay, uh, that black reflection. You know, what happens when you have it too tiny? Something that they call zebra. If you look at, uh, at this, we have black line, right? There is a black line on the very edge. Then we have bright line, sort of like a edge like. Then we have black line again, and it's tiny line. It's not large like mine, right? It's tiny. And then we have nice gradient. Those three lines, it's a little bit too much for that uh, distance. They, have, you know, it's like zebra. So I'm not sure if you need it this way. Let's see how I do have it, because this. Yeah, I have it similar, I mean, the black and then bright. Because, for example, these days I would probably uh, put the bright line, uh, if I would shoot it myself again, I would put it on the very edge without having black line since uh, the background is dark. So we don't need black line to separate the edge of the product. Because that's usually, you know, the edge is what separates it from the background. If background is dark, we could use uh, bright separation, bright, bright line directly. But still, uh, it's it's fine to have it. Uh, I would just suggest you to have a little bit thicker, uh, two times or three times thicker uh, that line. The you make and make it darker. You can make it darker. Okay. Okay. Cool. You're part of the course. I made the black line uh, thing because I didn't want to interfere with the lettering. I see. I see. That's that's well. That's fine. Sort of. Again, not not a big deal, uh, probably. Uh, you know, let's let's see how I regenerist. Let, let's see how it is, because for me, you know, it's always interesting uh, how the manufacturer uh, seeing their products. So, Olay regenerist and images, if they have. They ever have something nice. So, for example, uh, this one, it's on a bottle, I mean, on the case, so this is kind of what they think this is good, right? Uh, you see how they did it? Uh, they did it. Can we tap to zoom? Zoom. So, lots of, of course, lots of Photoshop, it's almost like uh, rendering. But you see how they did? Uh, they have lots of lines, actually. They just make it uh, sort of like under the label, right? It's under the label, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Well, they're not affecting the label, so you can do the same. Because it, it's okay to, you know, to shoot uh, to the composite image. Let's say you have a uh, nice, uh, um, the bottle itself whatever you want to put it out there and then you uh, use different light like a polarized light to highlight uh, the labeling and it will be sort of separated uh, by light and then you can put it together in the layers if you want to be really high-end type of thing okay this is what I uh, you know it, it's okay to just check and see how it got it done but the shot is great so thank you so much I'm sure you'll get a nice critique on this uh, on the program as well from the instructor, from Andre. He will give you a hard time, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, rendering, yeah, it was probably rendering. But even with rendering, you know, with uh, the light in the same, it doesn't matter if it's a physical subject or and they have rendering, they put light, they put soft boxes, they put diffusers, all this in the program. Right, because I, I know uh, some CGI artists buying our photography courses just to learn where to put those damn lights in the program in, in 3D. Already, so thank you. And the next one, I think it's the last one. No, it's not last. Let me see. Oh man, I kind of really why I'm so slow today. 
so, so many people. Thank you for liking, guys. Thank you for liking this uh, Friday talk. Just stay with me for a few more. I kind of will try to run it a little bit faster, maybe. So, uh, Yana Blanco. It's interesting. And it's even more interesting to see what was your inspiration. 29 followers. So we got more followers. 30. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, but we need 300 at least by the end of today. So this is some sort of image that was inspiration for you, right, Jana? And you did it actually so close to it that I can always think that it's the same photographer <laughs> uh, doing this. Who is this? David Drift. Who is this guy? Mm -hmm. David Parfit. Okay, I see there are some series of uh, images like this, right? Yeah. So, Yana. In general, it looks interesting. It's kind of, uh, there is a mess, right? When I see this, I see the mess. And it's not just a mess because uh, lots of items are laying around. It's a mess, uh, like, you know, I have just uh, teenagers, uh, my daughters. Uh, this is type of mess when things are basically dirty, not just, uh, well, why I was <laughs> mentioning girls, <laughs> because it's sometimes in their room something similar. So uh, let's say the powder is uh, on the box. I'm not sure why you made it, but okay, again, uh, it's, it's a reason and you, you see it this way. Then some cap with some stuff inside, right, like this one. And it's all quite messy which is not the most uh, kind of attractive, aesthetically attractive thing. Because uh, what usually happens when we have all kind of uh, stuff like this and shoot it this way, uh, it should be some, uh, some contrast between one thing and something that's quite opposite. That's what creates contrast. It's psychological contrast. It could be, you know, by light or whatever. Uh, sometimes we have a mess and then you know, something beautiful in the middle of it, for example. Or, well, there is something that kind of stands out, or some story. For example, I don't know, what's the story on this? It should be a story. If you would have, I don't know, like, uh, like a glass of wine, with, you know, a little bit remains of the wine, laying across somewhere on it. It's, again, it will be a story. Ooh, it was, you know, nice evening that end up even more nicely, you know, type of thing. In any case, it should be a story told by the image. Otherwise, it's like I'm looking and, huh, you know, and what? We should avoid this and what uh, question uh, from, our, from the viewer. We should tell the story. Story is something that kind of we attract, we've been attracted all the time. I mean, so what's the story here? Sometimes, for example, you may have mess and have some beautiful lighting for each item. Like, let's say you have some quite glossy stuff there. You have cylindrical items, but the lighting is super plain. You just looks like you have some sort of like a soft box on top and that's it. Or maybe even spotlight. I don't know. And the lighting is, you see, glossy items doesn't look sexy. They're just plain. Again, it should be the story. And... Uh, talking about the shot that uh, inspired you, the, ser the whole series. Yeah, it's it's a little bit better. For example, here it's kind of, <laughs> there is noodles, right, which kind of uh, look a little bit strange, and there is some uh, noodle-like uh, type of uh, cosmetic coming. So, and you see there is food in cosmetic. Here we have some story. We do have a story. Oh, there is sushi noodles and then boom so it's some teenager girl was you know in a hurry eating and uh, doing makeup before running for you know some nightclub dance or whatever at least there is some story probably well could be told by the viewer right without story like here uh, dollar bill 
and all this, uh, the coins, yes, something that kind of not coming well, well, together with the cosmetic. Here, well, that's probably, there is less story here, but at least some nice night lighting here. Uh, so for you, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, where is the story, okay? So either a story, or at least a story, ideally story plus a good execution, so nice lighting for each item, and then it will work, okay? So, Yana, it's a cool attempt, you probably learn a lot, and there are many cool things like, you know, vignetting all this and uh, the uh, background with all wrinkles, it's cool. But tell me what is going on, story, okay? Thank you. And uh, one more, so, photo... Bulika, Bulka, photo Bulka, <laughs> Bulika. <clears throat> And I'm running so late. Uh, we do have... Uh, what do we have here? We have this. Oh. Really? Or not? No, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, so we do have uh, the... Some... Oh man, uh, cool photo. Actually, it's not super cool. Lighting is <laughs> it's stock photo. And this is what stock photography, right? People not really know how to shoot stuff and uh, sell in the images because it's not it's not good photo uh, of this cosmetic. Uh, anyway, and you did this. So there are the things. There are technical. Uh, stuff here you have beautiful gradient you have beautiful gradient on your on half of your bottle and actually there is another image from you uh, no it's there I, I've seen somewhere another one anyway oh there, there are two and this one uh, but both images look at your crop what is going on why you did crop it such uh, tight there is no reason for this again guys there is no reason you touch the age of your frame with your subject it's a big no we never do this unless we know what we do but the rule is we never touch it we can crop it like some part of the subject we can crop why not but we shouldn't touch it okay plus more room just you know for this one there is no reason to crop subject so it should be definitely just more room around then you do have nice uh, right side and not so nice left side specifically because of the cap it doesn't look that nice the that other part i see the cool thing that you did i like this one way better than this one by the way this flowers it just go oh, no. What, what no no they they don't belong to this image i mean really it's like what what they doing here some strange flowers that at least to my taste is completely out of uh, you know out of the uh, of the composition. So this is better, I'll be talking about this. I like background, which is opposite uh, different lighting. I remember <laughs> last time I was kind of trying to do the same, right? Uh, but the this part that is dark, I think it should be a little bit better, especially the cap, okay? And the crop, and the cap. And uh, well, other than this, it's kind of, it's nice, but Something is missing here, I know. It's too much stuff here and uh, too little here. Again, with better crop, uh, I think it would be... Um, well, it will look way better. Yeah. But it's a cool one. How... It, it, it's, it's, you know, I would, I would be challenging for me, for example, to shoot it because I don't know how I would shoot this one, the, the cap, that other side. It should be sort of like a dark, but... Uh, one suggestion, if you have things like this uh, that are hard to shoot, and it's, it's many cases, I mean, it's all the time, basically. Uh, when you put lights, you see that some part of your subject looks great with this light, but others not. And if you fix those other parts, the first start getting look not good, right? N not looking good. 
And what we do, we do composite image, right? We do shoot one thing, we shoot another thing, we move light and shoot another thing, and then put it in, in Photoshop. So something that cannot be done simultaneously. It's completely fine. I would definitely use different lighting for the cap and for the bottle for the left side. Really, for the bottle it's one thing, and for the cap it could be another thing with the uh, with some tiny and really contrast gradient and stuff like this. Okay? So, good, 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 good. Thank you. And probably the last one, let's see, this one, yeah, it just, uh, this is out of the critique because it was, there is no statement of what uh, you need to shoot. I mean, what, um, for what date it was submitted, right? It was just a tag, it's not enough. So, this one, the last one. Uh, Bob, let me follow you like this, okay, uh, and actually do I have follow and like, yes, follow and like, okay, let's do this, and let's see, can I ask this question, hello, hello, oh, you're late, but you, you can, yes, you can uh, ask question, what is the best subject to use uh, then broncolor uh, box light on, oh, the box light, um, the best subject, well, somewhere where, where you need uh, really uniform uh, reflection. Because you see, uh, on the softbox, if you don't use any diffuser with the softbox, right, you will usually end up having a really bright reflection, talking about glossy surface. When it's not glossy, it doesn't matter what kind of box, box light or not box light, it doesn't matter because it's matte surface. On, on a glossy surface, if your light, if your composition requires the reflection to be not overexposed, not like, you know, just a bright line, super well, overexposed when it's completely bright. When it's completely bright, it doesn't matter what kind of soft box it is. Box light or just uh, some really cheap soft box, it doesn't matter. You will overexpose it. But if reflection should be visible, I mean, it should not be completely overexposed. It's not like white, all the white. It's visible and completely uniform, this is where a box light will work. Because on the regular soft box, there is always an uh, area slightly brighter, slightly brighter, and area slightly darker. It's super hard to do a uniform uh, filling of the, um, the main diffuser of the soft box on the regular soft box. Because of the, you know, it's single light in the middle and they try to diffuse it with double screens and all that stuff inside. But still, corners are darker, usually, right? And imagine that you need to kind of show that nice reflection without being overexposed. Box light, it has two flash tubes and very thick, or not very, but thick enough uh, uh, matte plastic, frosted plastic on, uh, on front. And uh, those, um, those tubes, they reflect lights inside and then bounce from the, you know, inside and comes uh, to the... Uh, through the plastic, so it's very uniform feeling, and this is where box light is, is the best. Whatever, whenever you need it, if you don't need such thing, you don't need box light. But cool thing, it's small. Another cool thing that it's it's very compact and it's you know with jewelry. I was using it with jewelry with uh, some you know precise stuff. It's super cool. Okay, you bought one. Congratulations, that's cool. I'm you definitely will enjoy it. The brown color, you can you can't go wrong. Anyway. Uh, this one, and uh, did I copy this? Let's see what it was. Uh, Gmail, no. You don't want to see my Gmail. No, you still see my Gmail. <laughs> well, it's loading. So, uh, let me jump this to here and jump here and make it like that, okay. PB bop, PB bop, 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 yeah. Uh, this is was the, oh, this is what, yeah, you definitely did some improvement. Ooh, huge improvement, what I can tell. <laughs> one second. Oh, this one. Okay, actually, this is a good one. And this is a good one. This is relatively good. The bottle itself looks like uh, not good, but this is good. Okay, I see now, I see. 
and your variation. Uh, good job, what I can tell. All is cool. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Basically, technically, it's done really well. It's done really well. Um, little minor thing that it will look better if you would have some a little bit more reflection on, on top. Just because it's, it's relatively bright, like it's, uh, it's metal, it's shiny metal basically uh, on top. And I understand because of the light and why you got it this way. Uh, but, you know, use just, you can use spotlight, but probably it will be too hard. Uh, use a little uh, reflector on top when you should just hold it by hand, uh, click it. Of course, it will create some reflection here, but you don't care about the reflection in Photoshop. You'll just make it, you know, brighter out of that little shot with the, uh, with the reflector. And that's it. it. It will kind of fix the whole thing. It's super easy to layer two images in Photoshop, right? And kind of uh, to bring uh, this to be visible, right? So layering thing, uh, composing. This is what I would suggest you to do. Uh, because otherwise it's nice, I, I like it, I like it. Uh, this one is slightly on the soft side. You see the edge is slightly soft. It's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. Uh, but ideally, ideally your light, whatever you was using there, should, be, should have a little bit sharper edges and it will, be look, it will look a little bit brighter because you have beautiful gradient here. Okay, it's beautiful gradient, it, it's super cool, it's nice. And uh, those little droplets, you may actually do a little bit more of them you see what kind of droplets here? I mean, more in terms of size. They look nicer because they're larger. And you're a little, very little. To spray, that's not the best way to get large pieces and to sit, you know, not, not dripping, but, you know, to be... Uh, we do it with, uh, you know, hand uh, and glycerin. You can point and add, I don't know, like 15, 20 of them all around, a little bit larger uh, drops, it will look better. It will look just better. Just on top of what you already have, okay? Uh, yeah, and that's it. The rest is super cool. The rest is super cool. I, I, I like it. I don't think that... Uh, yeah, if you guys have some ideas, you can throw me. Uh, I mean, sent, so I'll read it uh, if you want to critique, but yeah, it's, it's nice. I like it. it of course, mm, let me see. Yeah, you see, it's a little bit brighter here. It's probably just a mineral water, right? It's a water. And this is probably a rendering, or actually, I'm not sure, I don't know. But photography level is good. Uh, here, if it's a water, it's, it's mineral water, you have bright spot behind and the bottle really dark why i mean it's not water it's something that really kind of dense liquid and colored and so uh, this is probably uh, some misalignment of you know what is going on in the image either you uh, make things less bright but i wouldn't suggest because it looks cool uh, I think it could do just a little bit brighter uh, the internals, okay? And this is it. Thank you so much. We are done with the review. The rest are great stuff. Uh, this is, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> you probably uh, on the certification program because uh, shooting uh, the cases like this, uh, one of the assignments, I'm not sure, but yeah. Actually, good job, good job. I, I'm not going to talk about it because you don't have, uh, you didn't submit it for this specific uh, challenge, right? You don't have a statement, but that's a cool one. Uh, the, the way that you highlighted it, it's, it's not that easy, guys, if you think that it's easy to do just that box uh, to make it look not flat. Anyway, uh, John saying that spray the bottle with a couple coats of uh, gloss clear, clear acrylic to give it some uh, tooth for the droplets to hang onto and use a mist of 50-50 uh, water and glycerin. Oh, I see. It's interesting. I didn't, uh, didn't acrylic, clear acrylic. I didn't think about this. 
you are probably right. Yeah, it's interesting uh, because the the halicylin and water, yeah, larger droplets will kind of tend to uh, drip down on the glass. But if you uh, add layer of that uh, acrylic uh, gloss, that is transparent, and if it's nice, it will hold more. Uh, the the you know surface tension will hold larger droplets without squeezing them down. That's cool tip. Thank you, John. Already. Guys, uh, thank you so much. Now uh, we need to find the winner, okay? And again, uh, there are so many good shots uh, over here. And it just, it's super, super cool. And it's super hard for me actually to find the one. Hmm. Man. Hamudi, you did, you already have the prizes, <laughs> man. Uh, otherwise, uh, you, you might be uh, the first one. Then this one. It's simple uh, and it's done really well. And uh, yes, congratulations. This will be the winner of uh, this challenge uh, because what you did, you, you got uh, you know super good image uh, as inspiration and you did really well. Uh, kudos and congratulations. Uh, contact uh, support. Uh, support at 4 uh, with the well statement that you won this uh, challenge and uh, pick any course and any individual course on uh, our website over here to uh, do where the courses here are individual courses and well you'll be there uh, you'll get it okay so guys uh, thank you so much it was a pleasure uh, this time. Uh, next challenge, let's talk about next challenge. Ideally, of course, ideally, I would love to uh, ask you to shoot uh, something with polarized light. It probably will be uh, super hard for most of you because uh, very uh, few uh, has that the filter. And to get it uh, through the week, it's not... Uh, it's not, it may be not possible, especially because of this COVID stuff and the shipping and all this thing. Uh, but let's do this. Let's keep it the same way, uh, the challenge, meaning that you find some shot online that you think you can do better, or at least if it's super cool shot, uh, you can do as good as it is. But of course, you're aiming to do better. And uh, you shoot it and submit with 40G challenge tag hashtag on instagram and make sure to state that it was a submission for what date is this will be next friday next friday would be third of july so third of july we will have a friday talk where you submit your image and i'll review them and the winner will get any course any individual course However, I encourage you to try to shoot with polarized light. Find the subject, it could be whatever you shoot. You can explain, hey guys, this is just like my test or whatever. Of course, it should be better to be final shot, but uh, uh, still try to do with polarized light. It's not a requirement for the challenge. It just, you know, I encourage you, if you do have stuff, if you do have film, if you have polarized filter, try to do this. Okay, it will be just, you know, additional kudos for you if you will do polarized light. Already, and uh, we almost over. It's almost two hours. It's just crazy. No questions. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you all good. And I see you next Friday. Subscribe to the channel again, so you will receive instant notification when we go live. Uh, be prepared for the fourth of July. We'll have some super cool discounts for you. Very short time discount. It won't last for more than a couple of days, uh, but uh, it will be your chance to uh, either get any course or a subscription, especially unlimited subscription, which we're going to discontinue. Okay, unlimited uh, subscription that uh, gives you access to all the courses. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this one in the middle, when you go to membership, okay, membership on here, uh, this will give you for right now it's 585 per year access to everything on 40G except certification program. So all uh, workshops, 
all the classes that online, all the courses that listed on the individual courses included there. And this is not going to last after July. It, it will be gone. If you subscribe, you will have access for everything to all new courses that is coming. Basically, um, there are at least three more courses coming this year, maybe more. Uh, you will have access to this. And if you keep your subscription, uh, you will keep your access. But there will be no new subscribers. We'll close the program to newcomers. After, uh, well, it will be announcement, but the good chance, I mean, for you, good thing to to do is to jump on it when it will be a good, good discount on this on July 4th. Okay, just quick announcement so uh, you are aware of uh, what to expect. Already. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for your uh, likes. Thank you for your comments. It was a pleasure. Uh, have a good weekend. Have fun. Do something that inspires you. Do something that uh, fulfills you. You know, do, do good things. Uh, add some beauty to this world. It needs it. It needs you. And uh, I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye, my friends.